here today. We'll talk a little bit about it, but I think we're fine. Yeah. All right, cool. All right, Chris. So it's time again. Uh, it seems like it was just yesterday that you were out here, right? I mean, it was, I forget what month it was last year. It probably was somewhere in maybe September or October that, that, uh, that you came on. So it's awesome to have you come back out. Thanks for joining us again. Got it. Um, thanks for bringing out a cool little hot rod here from the dealership. Um, I don't know, you want to talk about that car a little bit? You want to tell us a little bit about this one that you brought up? I mean, you've been driving it recently, right? So what, what's your impressions of it, man? What, what's the deal with this car? It's an amazing car. It's a uh, Porsche, obviously a Panamera, Turbo S, E-Hybrid. Uh, it's got a lot of horsepower. Coming up on 700 horsepower, over 700 foot-pounds of torque. This one's really a nice one, so dark blue with truffle brown uh, interior. And it's got all the good bells and whistles on it, so it's a fun car to drive. It really so it's pretty is. exciting. It's yeah. awesome, huh? Yeah. All right, so uh, Chris is the owner and general manager of Porsche South Orlando, and, uh, you know, it was a pretty easy thing. I asked him if he'd like to come on, and he was all in. And the real reason that we wanted to have him on, not just to talk about the dealership, because there's always cool stuff going on at Porsche South Orlando, but to talk about your experience of heading out west, and it was, what, two weeks ago or three weeks ago now? Last week. It was two weeks ago, right? No, last week. Just last weekend, that's right. Yeah. So uh, there is one of the largest Porsche shows anywhere. It's called Luftacult, uh -huh. and it was started by um, uh, Patrick Long, Jeff Swart, and I can't remember the gentleman, the other gentleman's name. You know, it's funny, it, and I was thinking the same thing. But uh, yeah, so we'll we'll get to it later. But just some, you know, awesome guys, iconic guys in the Porsche world, and they came up with this idea several years ago, and it has just grown and grown and grown. And last year, for the first time, uh, it went overseas. Yeah. They had a meetup overseas, so this thing is just exploding, and it's one of those things that's just you can see why it explodes because. People that are passionate about air-cooled Porsche are all over the world. Mm -hmm. And and what they've done is put it in a format, and they're surprising everyone every year, right? They pick out a new place. And this year, it was at Universal Studios on the back lot. So why did you decide to go to Luft 6 this year? What what, what was all about it? Why, why'd you go out there? So I went to Luft 5 last year, and it was really an amazing event. It was actually held in a lumber yard. And it was a really cool backdrop, and I said, wow, how can they top this? So we went, the, obviously it was universal, backdrop's really cool. I mean, uh, you know, just to be sitting there on the same set where they filmed Back to the Future, so where that one scene was where he's running the cable up to the clock, right. that's actually where we were. And uh, there's some photos online, obviously, and you can see it all, but it was really a great turnout. And, uh, you know, you saw all the big wigs there. You saw the, the Jay Leno's, you know, former racers. You saw Tommy Kendall. Uh, Justin Bell, I mean, I, it, the list goes on and on. Tons and tons of people that are obviously uh, involved with the brand, and and it's re just really good to see everyone. And, and obviously the weather cooperated, and it was a perfect event. So yeah. uh, it's nothing like going to California and spending some time with great people and, and the Porsche brand. Yeah, yeah. So, well, they put it together this year. I guess they only announced it maybe uh, a couple of weeks or three weeks before they announced the location. Uh, as I said, as Chris said, they had it in a lumber yard last year, and the, the setup was phenomenal. I thought, well, how are they going to top this? This, you know, How are they going to top it? And so when they came out with the surprise of having it on Universal back lot, I thought to myself, wow, this is fantastic. One of the first pictures that I saw posted from the weekend was, I guess there is a, uh, a set that's like a gas station yeah. there. And I don't know who came up with it. I, I actually sent a, a message to Ray Schaefer with Porsche, uh, asking him, hey, Ray, who came up with the idea to put this here at the gas station? So he, he sort of pushed it off and said there were some other people involved in that. He didn't take credit for it. Uh, but it was such a perfect setting and how they put Porsche right above it. So it sort of took you back in time Absolutely. and the way they had the cars right out front. Was that something that uh, caught a lot of the people's attention? Was there a lot of people that, that were around the around that station? Yeah, and that, and that one section where that vehicle was, uh, you know, they had, again, it looked like an old classic fuel station. And, uh, you know, they obviously had all the new, you know, corporate look of Porsche on the outside, but they made it look period correct. So it was cool. Everybody was hanging out over there. And then, you know, if you've never been the Universal to the backstage in the back um, studio, the back lot, 
Uh, you know, it quickly goes from, you know, you're in Back to the Future, next thing you know, you're in an old Western town, you go around the bend, you're in, a, in Mexico, you come back around, you're in Manhattan, you're in Chicago. So, you know, you could see where they filmed all the different stuff. But the one that caught my eye, again, to your point, um, you saw the, the fuel station. The first one that caught my mind, uh, my eye, was uh, they had a movie theater. Yeah, an old I saw cool that one too with the 917. Yeah, oh. and that was just a great look, you know, and you're coming in, you're checking it out, and you're like, wow. And then you went back around on the other side, and it was kind of like the skyline of New York, and they had uh, all the roof cars and bunch of singers were over there so it was really really a neat event but what you originally said how do they top this yeah, so like, where do they go next year yeah, where do they go uh, well I've got I've got confidence you know when you have the creative minds that you have involved in that you know Jeff Zwart I mean oh, this yeah. guy this guy is you know the king of the mountain right I mean he's 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 raced at Pikes Peak and had so much success there and is and and continues to teach people how to go about going up that mountain and you know he's got driving talent that is just incredible but his talent for the camera his talent for shooting film uh, he's done so much things for so many uh, companies over the years so he's got that creative side of him so I think that's what is a, is a real driving force and and the whole loop deal yeah, so I got confidence it it'll blow our minds you know next year wherever it is sure. just like this year um, it's funny you brought up the roof car because I, I know that you'd traveled to Germany last summer, I think it yep. was, and you got to visit uh, roof. And I saw the yellow bird. There was a yellow bird out there, I think. It was on, on some wood planks. So tell us a little bit about that. I know I know roof is something that you know that you have a lot of passion for. So tell us about that. What was that like? That car in particular is you know the CTR. So I actually went out in that vehicle. We drove around some of the back roads in Germany. Oh, wow. And then uh, we took it out and we went ripping, you know, we went out on the Autobahn. So uh, it's it's approximately 2,300 pounds, I want to say. Don't quote me. I don't know right off the bat, but it's a little over 700 horsepower. So the car is a kite and it's got lots of power. And, uh, you know, I was in a GT2 RS right before that. And I thought, obviously, that was the fastest thing I've ever been in honestly until I got into that roof car and it was a whole different deal because it didn't obviously have all the traction control things it didn't have uh, all the electronics I mean it obviously does have some of the stuff but not to the level that you would see in a new Porsche right. GT2 RS so the car was it was raw you know it, it it had a lot of power and it just reminded you know that 964 look you know I'm just it's such a classic look and you know the work that they do there is really amazing so uh hats off to alois in estonia you know they do a yeah. great job and yeah. and uh it's really good to see that you know their brand is obviously as big as it is globally when you look at this little factory yeah. so it's uh it, it really is an amazing place to go and if you've never gotten a chance to go if you're making your way over to stuttgart that's definitely one of the places the on the bucket list to stop for sure. Yeah, that, that's a place to stop. I have a good buddy. I, I think I introduced him to you uh, not long after we opened the store. He's got a Roof 3400S Boxster that was you know built by Roof. It was sent over from the U.S. and they did it. And he just loves the car. He visited Roof about two years ago, and and I could see it. You know, like when you're telling me about being there, it was the same sort of look he had in his eye. You know, it was just it was just like a, a surreal experience to go to it. And for folks who don't know about Roof, I mean. Basically, what they do is they take a, a body in white from Porsche, basically the shell of a 911, and then they build the entire rest of the car, uh, and it actually gets a, a VIN from roof. So Except it be, it's, for it's the a CTR. It, yeah, well, the CTR is different. Yeah. CTR is a whole; it's their own chassis. Yeah. But uh, the new yellow bird. Yeah. Uh, is you know a whole carbon fiber car on itself. So yeah. it's just, uh, and if you've never gotten a chance to really, you know, see them up close. If you can't do it in person, obviously, go to their website, do a little research, but really interesting yeah. cars. And uh, what they're able to do is, is just amazing to me.